Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, all the while making a tremendous mess. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. We'd love to have you. Well, you can see where we are. For those of you who've been following along, we are tidying up the bilge in the wheelhouse. Basically the engine bay, which also had these nasty big aluminum fuel tanks in them. And a number of other sort of nasties. Glad to get it all out of here. Now, I have a cart before the horse, sequence of events issues I've mentioned before. I have no place to put these tanks uh, because I live aboard and I have no storage at all. The, my pickup truck is currently full of the bulk of the wreck of the soul uh, waiting to go to the dump so i'm just have to get the last of this out of there you can see at the back there and uh, do a dump run and then get the tanks into the truck uh, to take them to the scrapyard all the while just continuing to pick away at all the junk that's down in here yeah ever so much fun cup of tea all right Sorry about that. I gotta stop doing that. Okay, so these two pipes here are relatively significant. They are the old keel cooling pipes. Uh, for when the boat had a keel-cooled engine in it. So this pipe basically goes through a through hole and then along the keel to the back of the boat through a hole in the keel and all the way forward again and up into this one. So these are one contiguous long watertight pipe. Now the water line is about here. So I'd really rather not trip over one of these and put a lot of stress on the through hole. So I want to remove this pipe. However, if there's a leak in the pipe system underwater, it'll leak. Bah! So I'll put a cap on it, if I have one. So happy to mention that I was recently gifted this lovely little pipe wrench, um, and it points out that I can't believe I managed this long without one. Uh, that's not where I thought it was going to come off. Oh, please don't geyser. It wasn't scary at all. It appears that it's okay. Excellent. Okay, now that has come directly out of the through hole. And it's not leaking. I can tell you, it's ever so slightly terrifying. I'm going to keep these handy, gosh forbid. Okay, let's get this other one off. Note to self, pick up a couple of uh, half inch pipe plugs. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that for now and keep an eye on it. But now at least I can't trip over it and cause a problem. Now, speaking of tripping over and causing problems, right here, I'm gonna take you off the tripod. Right here is the main through hole. That was the water supply for the engine. Now, I'm gonna replace this because it's a sketchy non-flanged through hole, so that's uh, pretty straightforward. But in the meantime, I must not trip on this hit this, knock this sideways, and rip it out of the bottom of the boat because the ocean is right outside. So, gotta build myself a little bracket around that promptly. This is an old um, depth sounder uh, transducer. And uh, again, I wanna make sure that that is not uh, damaged. Not that I'm gonna reuse it, but I don't wanna cause a leak there. Okay, 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 okay. And while we're in the neighborhood, the old 8D or maybe possibly only a 4D battery that's been in here since I bought the boat, um, it's what I've been living off the last little while, but it's basically just to keep the uh, bilge pumps running on battery chargers. So that's got to come out and uh, I'm going to buy my first new battery. Excited. All right, with the forward end mostly removed of uh, the rest of the structure, let's put our attention here. Now this is a bit of a mess because it's where the companionway steps are, um, as well as the hot water heater, which I would like to retain or at least keep useful because I really enjoy a hot shower. 
So I'm not quite sure how this is all going to work. It gets more complicated because under this step, <laughs> this miserable step, is actually a hot water uh, radiator heater that I run off the hot water tank itself so that I can create a little space heating from the hot water tank, um, which I've got to be able to... Anyway, that's just all. Let's get out of here. It's all, it's all mess. All right, well that's dealt with. Well, I can tell you, I just had a moment of terror as the bilge running, bilge pump started running continuously and all this smoke uh, started to emerge. Uh, it's simply all the hot water pouring out of the hot water tank and draining in the bilge. Yes, all good. This is so disgusting. Layers and layers and to be fair, some of it I put on, of crap. Ooh. Okay, well, it's done. The tanks are gone. All the wood has been to the dump. The tanks are in the back of my truck, ready to go to the scrapyard tomorrow. Uh, I am so thrilled. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to have all that rubbish out of the boat and out of the marina. Um, so not that this is a delightful space, but all the real big liabilities are gone. So now, <laughs> good thing I'm in a good mood, because now what I get to do is clean this. And that is largely working with a uh, carbide scraper. Uh, let me show you basically what I'll be doing. Here's the scraper. If I take an example that's relatively well lit down here, I'm just going to do this for days and days and days and days. But it's time wonderfully well spent um, because I can't be washing this off because this has got grease in it so all these little shards that i've scraped up i have to be able to vacuum up and um, get off the boat rather than uh, be washing up now even when i do wash the bottom i won't be pumping it overboard i'll be recovering it well this really isn't all that bad here is a half an hour or so of cleaning up um i would say actually it's looking really great um and i'll be able to carry on through here relatively easily and uh, I'll give this a bit of a scrub after. Now, uh, let me just show you where the tanks were. On the port side, the tanks were sitting on a little bit of kind of some kind of plastic flooring mat, the kind of stuff that you lay down in the front hall of an apartment building type of thing. But <laughs> that's a nail. And the nail was digging into the bottom of the tank. Uh, and then off the end, there was no um, protection at all and in some places it was down here sitting straight on the um, the white oak uh, and uh, from what I understand in fact it's been confirmed by Todd Dunn thank you Todd that um, aluminum and white oak don't get along very well on the starboard side there was absolutely nothing um, the tank was sitting right against these with these nails punching through this sketchy bit of whatever it is and I can tell you down in this corner this is some lovely white pasty corrosion-y guck. Anyway, I think I got the tanks out of this boat about five minutes before disaster. I hesitate to say that because there was a few gallons of diesel still in this tank. But not a drop. So yeah, thrilled. Um, for those of you who saw me take apart the little companionway step, that was indeed the most disgusting thing I've ever pulled apart on the boat. It was just drenched in water and layers of rot and misery. So that's gone. I think that's the last really ugly thing. This corner with the hot water heater, with the water heater. Sorry, you Brits that don't like hot water heater. I, I, I realize the irony of it. Anyway, I got to keep that functional. Um, so I can wash my dishes in the bathroom sink, not much fun, and shower. So I got to work something out here. All the, the PEX plumbing is relatively temporary. Anyway, do I look like a really happy guy? Because I am. I'm a really, really happy guy. I'm going to work my way through here, clean up at least this side tonight, and uh, 
Carry on the other side tomorrow. I couldn't be having more fun, really. And good morning. It's a lovely rainy day here in Victoria, British Columbia. That's what winter is. Um, okay, so the port side is all cleaned up and it's spent uh, overnight soaking with um, uh, degreaser on it. Well, soap degreaser. This inside is going to be the real problem. If we start forward, we have to get rid of that battery, pull up all the junky structure, of course, and deal with the hot water heater, which I think I mentioned I need to keep operational because, of course, I do live in here and I like to have a hot shower. So what I'm gonna do is build a temporary structure for it way up here and plumb it anyway, you'll see. I gotta be able to get under it, clean it all out, and, uh, and and what? Just just get on with it. Get to work. I'm stalling. The point being, the pipes have to go behind this shelf because this is where the new sole is going. So I can have pipes below and I can have pipes above, but no perforations, at least not yet. All right, uh, more of the wonderful temporariness that. I seem to pride myself on, or uh, I don't think I could say I pride myself on it, but I certainly seem to live it. Okay, let's get some water out of this tank. More temporary. Temporary on top of temporary. Okay, right about here will be just perfect. Something parallel to that. That'll do. A few more screws, and I'll call this done. And it can sit right like that. I love the stainless steel version of PEX, but it is a little more difficult to remove. I've already described a dozen times over the years uh, my basic techniques for all of this, so I won't do it again. About there somewhere. Okay, two more things I want to show you. What I want to do, of course, is to have hot water for the boat. But the other thing I want to be able to do is have hot water in a spray nozzle that I can wash things with. I've wanted that forever. So I'm going to put a garden hose tap, PEX, um, over here where the uh, hot water used to be. So this is pretty straightforward. Now, there's an extra little trick what I'm doing here. There's a hot and a cold here. Um, so if I want lots of pressure, I can actually use the pressure off the dock. Just connect the dock hose to this and I have full line pressure from the, from the marina water. Now, don't do this unattended. The reason I say that is because if for some reason that hose was to burst on the boat, you're basically filling your boat with water. Now, it'd be great if your bilge pump could catch up, but it would be a little scary. Okay, so that's on there. That's done. Leaning over too far here. Okay. Now, water system should be pressurized. A bowl again. Let's check. All right, pump's running. All we have to do now is leave the hot water heater. Ugh, I hate these beasts. Oy, 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 oy. Well, I can tell you, I've been dreading this. <laughs> this is the old exhaust system, which consists of a massive cast iron muffler, um, which was under the back corner of my bed in a long copper, this is also copper, exhaust pipe running along the length of the boat. Now, I gotta get it out, and I was just crawling around under the bed with a grinder in my hand thinking I'd have to take it apart there, but I think I can just squeak it out through this gap and then I can take it apart in here, which will be much, much more convenient. Oh, yes. Whew. 
I can tell you, this was a very quiet muffler. Not very glamorous, but hours and hours of just going right through the inside of the hull, removing all the old fasteners, bits and pieces. I think I probably mentioned to you before that all these old wiring straps are actually lead. Little strips of lead. Uh, amazing. Anyway, lots to take off. Discover a few burns here and there along the way. Electrical, uh, who knows, over time. Well, <laughs> welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week here in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. It's the middle of December. Will you look at this? Oh. And I've got with me today my oldest friend at the marina and a good neighbor, uh, Kim Mann, who um, I wanted to have uh, aboard today for the Beer of the Week uh, because he's leaving us at the marina and uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, first, let's get to the beer because we do need to drink beer to talk stories, don't we? Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, we're going uh, back to Persephone Brewery in Gibsons, BC, which is over on the mainland for their Imperial Gingerbread Porter. Okay. Some of you will say I'm not much for porters, but you know what? Every once in a while, one sounds really good, and come on, gingerbread porter, it's got to be, sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We'll and, see what you think of this. And Persephone, you knew where the name Persephone came from if you watched Beachcombers. Absolutely. <laughs> Persephone was the first Pacific Northwest boat that I fell in love with. I just, I <laughs> thought I was going to have Persephone one day. There you go, Kim. Thank you, Peter. Let's see what we think of these. All right. Well, Kim, I think the first years has to go to all the great years that we've been friends and neighbors here at the marina. Oh, gosh. And all the stories and stuff you've told me. Oh, gosh. Cheers to our friendship. Cheers, Peter, to friendship. <laughs> oh. That's kind of fun. It is nice. It was rich. It is rich. Yeah. And I love dark beer. Yeah. No, that's actually okay. Oh, gosh. And family and friendship is mm -hmm. what this world is all about mm -hmm. the totally only thing is really important yeah totally is we have to just get to a little bit of housekeeping yeah and that is uh to congratulate last week's uh, t-shirt winner who is uh richard oh no sorry richland rentals richland rentals um let's get in touch i'll get in touch with you or you can get in touch with me and you won a travels with jordy t-shirt i also want to thank uh two new uh, paypal supporters Thanks so much to Ross Castle and Raymond Olson. Uh, thanks to you both and cheers. And cheers. So Kim, as I said, you're my first friend here at the Marine. The very first day I got here and I bought <laughs> MB Jordy. He came and dragged me down and said, you come on down because <laughs> to his boat here and uh, we, stayed up, <laughs> we stayed up to the wee hours. <laughs> Le learning about life here at the Marine and the storm. And, Welcome, uh, Peter. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and it's it's been it's been wonderful. Some of you who are regular viewers will have met Kim a couple times in the past because he's helped me with the engine. Uh, <laughs> I think we're at seven. No, we're at six until the last one goes in. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> who's coming? Uh, and you'll miss that one, unfortunately. Well, you, maybe you'll come and visit. Anyway, you're you have a long legacy of Pacific Northwest cruising, and. Uh, what, you know, a lot of the people who are watching are really interested in the cruising lifestyle. Can you give us just a few minutes of your take on cruising up here? It is a unique lifestyle, but it is a most rewarding lifestyle. And the Pacific, the Pacific Northwest, or the Northeastern Pacific Ocean, as I often see it, from the ocean side, it, it's so rich and diverse in all respects culturally but with respect to fish and wildlife oh unbelievable right. never get bored right and see things new things and amazing things all the time right weren't you saying that you you've compiled a list of hot springs that you couldn't visit all in a <laughs> lifetime they're all I secret by the way i could have <laughs> and i'd have just made it in time for my 150th birthday <laughs> Well, you'll have to tell me where a few of these secret hot springs are, but I'm sure they're in pretty far away places that are not easy to get to. Do you have a greatest moment, like a greatest memory, like something that you'll always think back to about cruising out here? 
there was many of them were unexpected you least expected and there it is and there was one that this one that comes to mind Peter it was right at the beginning of my cruising season two days out of here but I hit heavy westerly winds all the way out of Juan de Fuca and I was short of my uh, destination I was heading for Effingham Bay the entrance to Barkley Sound and then heading back up in there I didn't quite make it so I thought rather than push it I was tired I went into 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 um, Pachina Bay and crashed <laughs> but there was gonna be a break in the wind and a break in the weather and I thought you know I'm only about an hour and a half away all I could do is get up, get up early in the morning and get around the the, the, the headland there they call it Cape Beal and then I'll, I'll, I'll be at my first place that I intend to stay a while and I, thought I was up early well almost I slept in uh, but I was chugging away trying to get the sleep out of my eyes and I saw up ahead a bunch of fish jumping on the surface of the water that's got to be herring what the heck's going on and I'm, I'm, I'm coming right into it throttling back going slow oh oh the last second I'm entering a ring of bubbles I know what this is grab the throttles grab the gear shifts the transmissions in neutral so the propellers won't turn and I'm dead in the water idling away and I know what's coming next I'm in the middle of a bubble feeding episode of humpback whales my gosh how did I get in this mess and I can't get out I can't do anything I'm going to have to let it happen I'm terrified I'm scared I'm... and I know what's coming next these huge mammals come bursting out of the water all all around me with their mouths wide open scooping up thousands of pounds of herring and smash and crash and splash all over all over and it's over as quick as it began oh my goodness how did I ever survive? How did we all survive yeah, that? Yeah. The well, greatest moment. That's a, that's amazing. I mean, that's a dream moment. I mean, I've been cruising the coast for a couple of years now, and I've yet to really have an amazing whale sighting. Some wonderful porpoises this last summer, but yeah, yeah, that's an yeah, awesome yeah. story. Wow. And oh, you can, you'll can you have that with the rest of you. You have a lot of stories in you. Oh, gosh. You're, you're an author. And I wanted to let you all know that Kim is a published author, and uh, mm -hmm. I'll put a link down below. He has his first his first um, published uh, work is a is a child's uh, stories about animals on the shore, animals up and down the coast. Yeah, is that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, six, though, we'll six put a short link. stories. Six short stories. Okay, yeah. well, we'll put a link down below, and you can get it on Amazon, I believe. Yeah, yeah Amazon. Yeah, any of the big publishing Super. companies Excellent. online. Excellent. Well, um, anyway, if you're interested in that sort of thing, I'll I'll, uh, I'll uh, put a link down below. Whispers on the waves. Whispers on the waves. Six I should short have known stories. That. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, I've read it. It's great. <laughs> what are you up to? So, I mean, I have him aboard, so to speak, because he's leaving the marina. He's yeah. with great mixed emotions, I must add. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I've come to the end of my time of traveling alone up and down this BC, beautiful BC coast, and I'm going home, which is only 14 miles from here. Mechosan, for those of you that might know it, Mechosan Souk area. But I'm also excited, as sad as I am, mm -hmm. to leave this community, mm -hmm. to leave my beautiful sailor sea. I'm moving on to shore, I'm moving home, mm -hmm. and I'm excited that I'm going to continue to write these stories because they're all, hundreds of them are all up here. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that. Well, that would be great. We'll keep busy at it. And we'll, and we'll have to make sure we get up to see you and you get back out here. <laughs> yeah. Now that I'll be mobile. No. I'll take you for a ride finally. Oh, <laughs> would that, oh, would that ever be a dream come with, true? With any luck. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Anyway, thank well, you. super. Thank well, thanks again. And uh, cheers to cheers all your future you. endeavors and all the things. 
And uh, we came up with the word of the week. Would you like to tell folks what the word of the week will be this week? Well, as you probably heard us mention, <laughs> The most important things in, in life and how I measure my my worth as a person mm -hmm. is family and that's a small group mm -hmm. but the biggest group friends right. friendship is what it's all about friendship excellent well that I, I was really pleased that that we came up with that word for today so if you'd like to win a Travels Authority t-shirt, use the word friendship in a comment down below and I'll pick it random over the next week or so. Friendship. Friendship. To friendship. Cheers. Cheers. See you next week.